Okraw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to encourage you guys to get a microbiome test, right? If you guys are into a raw food diet, you know, vegan diet, whole food plant-based diet, vegetarian diet, omnivorous diet, carnivore diet, keto diet, I don't care what kind of diet you are on, I'm going to encourage you guys to get a microbiome test. To me, this is next level, you know, so that you can find out your level of health of your microbiome, right? Microbiome is so critical to our lives. It, they, they help us digest our food. They make, you know, metab secondary metabolites that can help heal our guts. So if, especially if you have any kind of autoimmune condition or inflammation in your body, you know, I think a microbiome test can be very important to, you know, lead you in a better direction so that you guys can optimize your health. You know, this is something that is not talked about in the raw foods movement, even in the general plant-based movement. They don't really put an emphasis on the microbiome testing. And I personally think that is sad. While you see many raw vegans and even vegans showing their blood tests, yeah, I got enough protein, got enough D, got enough B12. Microbiome is the next level. And in my personal opinion, and I'll be the first to tell you guys that I'm not a microbiome scientist. I am not a doctor. I'm nobody. I'm just a dude who has some health challenges that switched his diet into a raw vegan diet 27 years ago to get better health so that I would not lose my life because that almost happened to me when I, when I was younger and the doctors told me I might not make it out of the hospital alive. And so I've been on this never-ending quest to build my health and the microbiome to me is an integral part and I wish I could have gotten a microbiome test at different stages of my life. So if you have babies, have kids, get the get their their microbiome test done also so that you at least you have a reference point to see hey when they were this age, this was their microbiome and then as they got older, whatever diet they ate, you could see how their microbiome changed, evolved. You know, the other thing I'll say is that I'm a citizen researcher. So I've been researching and learning about my own microbiome as a citizen scientist. And that's what I encourage you guys to do. Also, you know, there's no specific like this microbiome is the best. They have ranges and generalities and they, they're still learning a lot about the microbiome. So now is the time to jump in and get your tested before you get left behind and they learn about all these crazy things. There's like gut brain connections, you know, there's connections with how you feel, your feelings, your mood. And of course, your immune system is directly tied to your microbiome. And it makes it it makes me sad that there are some people in the health field, including people in the raw foods movement, that believe microbiome test is not important because they didn't learn about it when they got into raw foods. When I got into raw foods, the microbiome wasn't even discovered yet, right? And they didn't have all this comprehensive testing that we could do now through, you know, DNA sequencing and all the crazy stuff that I don't really even know how it works. I'm just glad they have that. They used to have to culture your bacteria in your gut to kind of see what you have in there. But now this is like state of the art. I want you guys to do it. And it's really affordable, right? If you guys live in the US, you know, the kit I use is Ombre. They're on the screen right now. And they actually have the, the coupon code that probably expired, DD Kit 40 to give you 40% off. There's also a 30% off coupon. Maybe it's Welcome 30 or Welcome 20 for 20% off. If they still work, I'm not really even sure. This is not a sponsored video. In addition, also take their uh, prebiotic powder, which is, you know, additional fiber, which is different kinds of fibers then found in fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. Um, and that's been very important. And the microbiome data that I've gotten has been very eye-opening to me to see, hey man, I lived on a raw vegan diet for like 27 years, finally got my microbiome test done. And to me, my microbiome test is not where I would like it to be. You know, thinking that I'm living a raw vegan lifestyle and it's the best diet on the planet because this is what we're supposed to eat. It's the healthiest because that's what we hear from, you know, raw food educators and teachers. And that's what I learned. Seeing my microbiome test, you know, put a few doubts in my mind about my specific diet and especially, you know, taking new information into consideration from like, you know, the fiber fueled book by Will, Dr. Will B versus Volskowitz, um, you know, about how a diversity of foods is really best and how limiting to just eating fruits and vegetables and maybe some nuts and seeds sometimes, you know, is probably not the best. And actually my microbiome confirmed it for me, of course, on your microbiome journey. And when you do a test on your raw vegan diet, maybe your microbiome is perfect. Then yes, great. Keep up whatever you're doing. But if it's not perfect, 
then maybe you want to adjust and modify and change what you're doing if you believe the microbiome is important like I believe, right? It's been correlated that, you know, people in certain long-lived cultures, they have certain gut bugs or a certain kind of, you know, microbes in their gut. And those are some of the microbes that I want in my gut because they can confer protection from disease for us, right? And currently, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm missing some of the gut buddies that I want to have in me. And so I'm so glad my gut microbiome test revealed this to me. So before I go on, I'm going to just basically share with you guys my microbiome testing and how I analyze it. And it's not necessarily through the Ombre Labs itself, which does analyze your um, you know, results on their website, which is great. But I want you guys to take it to the next level to use an analyzer that basically goes a little bit deeper than the Ombre does. And actually, that's a website called Biome Site. And I'll show you guys how to use the Ombre data and upload it into the Biome Site to get the full analysis that's more comprehensive and easier to understand. And of course, if you guys live in the UK, you might want to just go to Biome Site in the beginning because they'll also do, you know, uh, microbiome testing and, and they're geared for people in the UK. So I'm glad that Biome Site makes their analysis tools available for other data if you did get a microbiome analysis from, you know, a different company because all the data is a little bit uh, different. Final thing I'd like to say is I want to thank my video editor <laughs> um, for turning me on to Biome Site because actually I was not aware of it. I was aware of another website called Microbiome Prescription, which goes even deeper and is even more hardcore. And it's for the researchers and not for necessarily the newbies that don't know what they're looking at. <laughs> and that's what I was using. But I'm like, oh, yeah, good bi Biome Site. I don't have to learn as much. And it just spells it out in plain English for me. So that's what I'm going to do with you guys in this episode. Go over my microbiome results as a 27-year raw vegan. And I encourage other health influencers, you know, whether you're a vegan, raw vegan, carnivore, right, to put up your microbiome testing to prove that your diet is good, right? You know, in my opinion, a carnivore diet that's lacking in significant amounts of varieties of fiber and phytonutrients that feed your microbiome probably is not going to be the best, you know. But what do I know? I'm just a dude who, you know, does a lot of, reads a lot of research, study papers, and watches a lot of microbiome, you know, doctors on uh, YouTube. So that's how I get my information. All right. So yeah, be your own researcher. Let's get into the data. All right. So now I'm on the ombrelab.com website. And this is who I would encourage you guys to get your gut health tests from. Uh, you can go to shop once again, if you've never done this before. And you could basically, right now they have the gut health test on sale for $59.99, normally $99.99. Uh, you could get that test, but actually I would recommend the gut health program, which is a little bit better deal because um, this current gut health program, oh, whoa, it's $119.99. So let's not do that one today. <laughs> so yeah, I'd recommend the gut health test there. You'd want to just go ahead and add it to your cart and uh, use their coupon code uh, to check out with. It's uh, if you go on a subscription, subscribe and save, uh, you could do a gut health test like every six months, you get a lower price, so that could be good. You could also use the, a coupon code with that price in some cases, like the DD Kit 40, if that's still good, or the Welcome 30 or the Welcome 20. And then you're gonna add it to your cart and then you're gonna go ahead and then uh, check out. And then once you get the kit, which looks like this, you're going to open it up. You're going to, you know, don't wait. Once you get this kit, you should, guys should do your stool sample as soon as possible. I waited and I should have did it a lot earlier. It's super simple, guys. Literally, all you do is you take one of the sterile Q-tips out of there. You wipe yourself when you're going number two. You get a little bit of the on the tissue paper. You take a little pea-sized swab on the Q-tip. You stick it in the little vial. They give you a swish it around, seal it off, and then you send it off to them. Easy as pie. I will say one of the samples that I sent to them got damaged in shipping. So then they gave me a free kit to redo the test. So that was cool. And I, to date, I've done three tests because I want to kind of monitor where I am as I make some smaller changes or more significant changes. So uh, then what we're going to do is once you, uh, you got to register your kit once you get it in the mail before you send it back to them. That's very important. So just going to go ahead and hit the register kit button. And it'll it'll uh, get you to sign up and all this kind of stuff. I'm already logged in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pretend we've just logged in and got the results. We, and then in which case you're going to come to a screen like this. It's going to say your score is 74 and you could click see gut report and all this stuff. Now you could see 
the ombre score and could go through their bacteria levels, food suggestions, and what's recommended. They will recommend their supplements, their probiotic supplements, you know, which is part of their business model. They will also try to sell you like, you know, sign up for our extra data premium for $10 more. I would probably not recommend that. You could if you want. So anyways, my test at Ombre was 67 the first time, 76, and then it went down to 74. But that's with their scoring system, which, you know, I have some faith in, but I have more faith in the Biome site. Uh, website, which I believe is a bit better um, analyzer of your microbiome data. So how can you extract the data from Ombre to use it at the biome site? Very simple. You're just going to want to click on right here. It says download my data. And then you can see, you know, this, this sample is the one that got broken. I have three samples to date. So you're going to go down to the sample you want, and you're going to click the download fast queue. Very important. You don't want the CSV, you want the fast queue. And then what's going to happen is it's going to pop up the FASTQ, download FASTQ files, download FASTQ1. You're going to press that once. It'll go ahead and download it for you. You're going to go ahead and download FASTQ number two. That's going to download it for you as well. Go ahead and close that. And now you're basically done with Ombre. So you could close them out. And then you're going to go on to this site. It actually is called Biome Site. And they sell gut health tests over in the UK. So actually they have a... 20 20 pound promotion off in the uk right now so if you're in the uk you might want to use them for your microbiome testing Ooh, man it's uh quite a bit more than in the u.s there so feel sorry for you guys in the uk um but nonetheless uh whether you get a test from them or your ombre test you can now log into biome site click in this little person thing up at the top to go to your account which i've already done and then once you log into your account, you're going to see the different tests you've done. Uh, and I just was tr trying this one for a little bit earlier. So what you're going to do is yours are going to be empty on this whole bottom half. So what you're going to do is you're going to say upload sample. And you're going to go ahead and then upload your sample. Super simple. You want to look at the Bristol school stool scale and take a look at like what was my stool the day I took my sample. Maybe you could put this on your ombre so you don't forget. And mine was like a sausage or snake, smooth and soft. That's probably what we really want. Somewhere like this. We don't want it too blobby and we don't want it too watery either. If you guys are getting blobby or, um, you know, uh, nuggety <laughs> stools a lot, you know, to me, you know, once again, you guys need to check with your doctor. To me, that's a sign that your microbiome's not working optimally. Anyways, so I have a Briggs, I have the number four. And then how regularly I will say and let you guys know that I am three or more times per day. And this is a gut test. And then the date, you know, the date's a different date, but I'll just put today's date, which I'm filming this. And then it was actually more importantly, sequence by. So you could upload um, different um, companies' data. So I don't know who Laurengen is or Olawell or Sciomagnin. I know you buy you buy them. They're also a U.S. company. And if you're uh, doing Ombre, it's actually Thrive Inside Data. So you're going to want to have the Thrive Inside. And then you're going to select Fast Q. And then you're going to go ahead and go to Select Files. And you're going to go ahead and call them up. And just go ahead and uh, highlight the two Fast Q files that you just downloaded. You're going to go ahead and click the Open button. And then you can put a description. You know, uh, this is test data. Please eat because I already have up uploaded this, but I'm just showing you guys how to do it. You're gonna go ahead and agree to their privacy policy, data terms, click submit. You guys are gonna see the little you know, thing is gonna kind of go in a circle <laughs> and then it's uploading your data. So once you upload your data, it's gonna say uh, zip file received. Then it needs to go ahead and then analyze your data. So this could take an hour or two, maybe three hours. They will email you when your data is done, or you can return to this screen and it will say results process. So we're gonna go ahead and click my most recent legitimate sample from November. And we're gonna click the drop, which means view sample. And I could show you guys my gut wellness score is 80.39 according to biome site, but yet on the ombre, it was like 60 or 70 something. So they're saying I'm satisfactory, but I still have a ways to go. You know, I think, hey, eating the optimal raw vegan diet, I'd be like at 90, 95 or something. But you know what? Mine was just satisfactory. Now, the next thing I'll tell you guys is 
why is mine only 80.3 now I'm being eating this amazing raw vegan diet, right? Hey, diet is one component of your microbiome. How much sleep you guys are getting is one component. You want to be getting more than seven hours uh, of sleep a night consistently. And I know some raw vegans, oh, I only need five or six hours of sleep, right? And for most of my time as a raw vegan, I've been getting less sleep, which according to the science is not necessarily good for your microbiome. So some raw vegans might want to actually try to work on getting more sleep, even though they think they don't need it <laughs> for your microbiome. But maybe a raw vegan could have a good microbiome with less sleep. We don't really know the data. I'm just kind of going off the data from the average American out there. Of course, your microbiome and wellness score may also be dependent on how you were as a child, right? I'm meaning when you were birthed, were you vaginally or C-section birth? Vaginal births are definitely better for your microbiome. Were you breastfed or not breastfed? I was not breastfed as a child. I believe that's a partly, partly to explain my lower microbiome score because I didn't have some resident bacteria that should have been in my gut all these years. Of course, how you live your life up to the point you get your microbiome test <laughs> will also indicate your score as well. How much stress in your life, how happy you are. There's so many things related to microbiome. Of course, the diet's a good component of that. One of the most important ones because you're feeding them, but you know, your feelings and your sleep, all these things are also very important. So I am no expert in this. You know, I just kind of have my own uh, beliefs regarding this, and that's what I'm sharing in this video. Okay. So anyways, my school, my score overall is 80.39. And then they have a few different areas you guys can look at. Diversity, probiotics, commensals, and patho, pathobionts. And I'm not a good English person, so I can't be pronouncing all this stuff. But these guys, the path, pathobionts, like it, mine's 100%. So it's like 100 satisfactory. It says the pathobionts score is calculated based on the subset of bacteria that can be identified on a biont site. This is not an exhaustive list blah, blah, blah. And basically the pathobionts are like maybe some of them maybe not good actors. You know, they could be, they could be pro more problematic. And uh, luckily, you know, you could see you have like the range. So like you should be in the green somewheres. If you're in the yellow, that's definitely a concern. And if you're red, that's really not good. So luckily, you know, for mine, like E. coli zero. So yeah, if, you, if somebody says they're vegan and they got E. coli, hey, they're probably eating chicken or something, right? <laughs> but I ain't got no E. coli in me, man. <laughs> but yeah, you can see I got a little bit of the proteobacteria and this uh, Biophila wadsworthia or whatever. But nonetheless, it's still very low compared to maybe an average person that may be up in this range. Now, the cool thing about this is that if you click on the plus here, right, it breaks it down to tell you, right, and I got zero, so it's not really gonna tell me anything, but it goes to the description. You could see E. coli is normally in the intestines of healthy people and animals in small quantities, you know? So uh, so then we could go, then, so if you do have like too high of E. coli, you could say to reduce, it'll tell you, hey, to reduce, eat some high fiber foods. Yes, fruits and vegetables, other plant foods, take some prebiotic supplements such as GOS, uh, lactulose, resistant starch, and they're gonna recommend foods for you guys to eat you know, to, you know, to reduce the E. coli um, distribution. You could see, like, this is comparing to the, you know, people that they've tested. And basically the range was like to 0.49. So some people could be very high. And I was like, you know, actually like zero. So like, <laughs> you know, you could see the median average and all this stuff, upper range. So that's cool that they go into the detail on this. So we're gonna go back to the uh, summary. And then you can see we got commensals, which basically commensals are kind of in your gut and they, they say, uh, you know, commensal bacteria is an integral part of a normal balanced microbiome. Persistent overgrowth of these bacteria have been correlated with various disease states. Um, that being said, while they do claim the negative, I also have seen studies that commensals can have positive impact and protect you from disease. So once again, you know, like a lot of things in life, as I've learned, are not absolutes. Commensals could be good, but it could be bad. If you got too many, it's probably not good. If you don't have enough, it's, it's probably not that good either. You want to have it in the recommended limits. So you can see my commensals are 72. They need improvement. And where do they need improvement at? Well, you could take a look easily at this chart. So you can see my bacteroids are actually a little in the green range. So I'm good on that. My usobacterium is in the green range. That's, I'm good on that. My provitella, you know, it's not in the red, 
but it's not in the green. It's a little bit too high. So I need to kind of lower that one. And then my uh, bacteriodetis is actually also a little bit high as well. So I want to lower both these. So what can I do, right? And this is where this really goes into detail that the ombre doesn't. You're going to go ahead and click the plus, right? And then you could see the breakdown of which one. So actually, of all the bacterioidetes, I have the Provitella coppery the most. And that's probably the one I really need to get down. That's the one that's like really, really high. You know, I think that should be a little bit lower. And then you could click on a description. Hey, what does the Provitella do? And they're gram negative, blah, blah, blah. And it says studies indicate long-term diet is strongly associated with the gut microbiome composition. Those who eat plenty of protein and animal fats are predominantly bacterioides bacteria, while those who consume more car carbohydrates, the Prevotella species, dominate. So, yeah, why do the Prevotella species dominate in me? Because I eat <laughs> plants. I eat carbohydrates, man. That's what I've been eating. So, you know, it tells you if you don't have enough of these, like if you're a carnivore, you're probably not going to have enough of these. You could say, how do I increase it, right? Well, I don't need to increase it. I need to reduce it. So what do I do to reduce it? And basically, they're telling me I need to take uh, curcumin, uh, so turmeric, including supplements, uh, niacin, vitamin uh, B3, and of course, also eat turmeric. So I should probably start eating turmeric or curcumin every single day. <laughs> so I need to work up to that. During the pandemic, I was drinking turmeric juice every single day, but I've since gotten off that track a little bit. And you can see, once again, this distribution to see how you rank, you know, compared to others. And, you know, I'm definitely in the low range. And then the tracking, you can see how it relates to you over time. So on my first test, and let's not, don't look at the December 15th test, because that actually is fake data. But as you can see, my first test in January was low. And then, you know, it's staying low. And then actually, whatever I did changing in July to November, which I know I what I was doing, it actually increased a bit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I probably need to kind of maybe get on more turmeric because I think I, I laid off some of the turmeric. All right, so going back to the overview, you can see now we got the probiotics. And the probiotics, mine is 75, needs improvement and, improvement. and it says probiotics are the beneficial protective bacteria, good bacteria. So we can see it, my chart are all, all the main ones. And you can see like, hey, my ruminococcus is optimal in the green range. My rosebura, a little bit low. I'm not really too concerned about that. Lactobacillus, it's in the green range. Uh, for me, that's a little bit low, but it says optimal. My uh, Fascillobacterium, a little bit low. My Blata, a little bit high. But here's a, these are the two that concern me the most. My Bifidobacteria is low. And uh, Bifidobacterium, basically, you, you get a lot established based on my research. Um, when you're a child and if you're breastfed, if you're not breastfed, then you might be low in bifidobacteria. And if you're not eating foods that feed the bifidobacteria during your life, like you don't necessarily make more um, or can have more or, or increase more unless you're really feeding them. And most diets don't feed the bifidobacteria. And then in addition to the bifido that I am concerned about, the acromancia is another one that concerns me. I do want to be in the proper range. Once again, there's a nice long green range. You don't want it too high. You know, these bacteria, while they are can be good in the right range, if there's too many of them, they could also be really bad. Acromancia actually eats your mucus in your gut lining of your wall, your gut lining wall, and that it causes your body to create more mucus. So if you have leaky gut, it is pot one of the reasons is potentially because, you know, there's no demand for your body to create the mucus and or you're not giving your gut wall the different nutrients secondary metabolites that the bacteria basically poop out for lack of a better word that will actually you know strengthen your gut well as well as some of the prebiotic fibers that may also help with gut integrity so it's let's just go over my bifidobacterium because acromantia is a little bit more challenging to increase and that's what i'm currently working on a protocol to do that right now and if it works i'll share with you guys or what i learned once i figured out I'll probably make another video. But anyways, on the bifido, you can see which ones I have, but and it'll tell you like what bifido bacteria does. And basically, I need to increase it. So to increase, it says eat a plant-based diet. Hey, I'm already on a plant-based diet. It hasn't been increasing it, guys. What's up? <laughs> so I need to even go deeper than just eating a plant-based diet. There's specific plants that bifido bacteria like to eat. And what is it? 
Acacia fiber. So do does a raw foodist get acacia fiber on their diet? Not unless they're supplementing an acacia fiber supplement. Do raw vegans get galacto oleosaccharides in their diet? I don't think so because, you know, they're mostly in beans, but I actually take a GOS supplement. Do raw vegans get guar gum? <laughs> no, because they're not eating processed foods with guar gum. Do they eat gum arabic? No, they're not eating processed foods. Do they eat lactulose? Lactose? Not lactose intolerant? No, they're not because they're vegan. Are they eating lactulose, which is not a dairy product? It's a, it's a, it's a, anyways, yeah, it's something else. But no, they're not. Is a raw vegan eating milk oleosaccharides? No, they're not going to do that because that's in mother's breast milk. Are raw vegans eating pectin? Yes, in apples and other foods. Are they eating PHGG? I'd have to look that one up. Are they eating raffinose, resistant starts, reversitrol, stachose, or XOS? Right. So raw vegans don't get a lot of these prebiotic supplements that will feed the bifido bacteria. Right. So that's why I started including a more wider variety of foods to get a well balanced amount of different prebiotics. Just because these prebiotics are listed doesn't mean you could just eat one. I'm just going to eat, I'm getting, you know, the pectin from apple. So I'm good because all I need is pectin. I just need one of these. No, my goal is to get as many of these as possible because each bifidobacterium kind might like a different kind of prebiotic fiber. Of course, they'll tell you what foods you should increase to get more bifidobacteria if you guys are low like I am. Eat acacia tree. Now, I, I have to look up how to eat acacia tree, but you know, there's acacia fiber supplements. Of course, you know, raw vegans would eat apples, apricots. They're not going to eat artichokes. I've started to eat artichokes. Asparagus, not really known on a raw vegan diet, but you can't eat that raw. Bananas, now that's just not ripe bananas. That's unripe green bananas for their resistant starch content. Raw vegans generally are not going to eat too many beans unless they sprout lentils, but then they're eating, a, you know, only lentils and maybe a few other beans that are sprouted. They could eat beetroots, could eat broccoli, could eat carrots cashews they're not really raw unless you get the really raw ones from matt monarch could eat cherries you know chickpeas could sprout those chicory most raw vegans don't eat chicory it's a bitter green tastes nasty and they're not definitely not eating the root cotton seed flour not going to do it so anyways it'll tell you all the different foods you should be eating and you know no matter whatever your your dietary camp raw vegan fruitarian you know carnivore you may not be eating some of these foods so you know I would say that it's important to eat a wider variety and expand your diet, especially if your microbiome test comes back, you know, maybe not optimal like mine did, right? I didn't, what's yours going to be? I can't tell you what yours is going to be. You guys need to do a test yourself, get an ombre test so that you guys could find out and take your health to the next level because maybe you're deficient in some of these bacteria that will play a role in your long-term health outcome and longevity, in my personal opinion, based on the data that I've seen, okay? All right, so yeah, so that's on my probiotics, and this video could be really long if I go into each individual one, but I'm not going to do that to you guys. And then we're going to go into the diversity score. This is this score is very important to me. You know, uh, healthy individuals have been shown in microbiome testing to have a great diversity, and my diversity is only 68, so it needs improvement. And it's, it says satisfactory is above 80, and I'm in needs improvement category. Luckily, I'm not in the poor category, so I'm kind of like right in the middle of needs improvement. And you can see the index. And basically, what are the general recommendations, right? The general recommendations are things I've already been doing. I've been eating high fiber foods, fruits and vegetables. I've been eating the rainbow. I've been eating some fermented foods. I know some camps of raw foods don't eat fermented foods. Fermented foods are very healthy, in my opinion, and good for your microbiome. Um, lots of studies prove this, although some people think it's rotten food and you shouldn't eat it eat seasonally you know hey i grew a garden that's the best way to eat seasonally as well as i visit farmers markets and farms in my area and including today to buy seasonal produce avoid snacking you know i generally eat larger meals and eat until i'm full get a pet i have a lovely pet dog named oakley man i get exercise every day and i spend time in nature right i love hiking i love going out in nature and i garden so i mean this is i already do all these things but yet my diversity still needs improvement so what does that mean do I need to do more exercise, more fermented foods, eat more of the rainbow, eat more high fiber foods, right? What I'm going to tell you guys is this. My personal opinion is that I need to diversify my high fiber foods. So instead of just eating fruits and vegetables, 
I'm eating other kinds of high fiber foods, including, you know, beans and grains, you know, uh, heat prepared in certain ways. You know, I'm including more fermented foods. I have some videos on the, the most ferment, best fermented food to create greater diversity and CFUs in your gut. I've already eaten seasonally. Maybe I could eat more seasonally and kind of go out of my way to buy more resistant starch style vegetables. Um, I don't really snack too much as it is. I just eat main meals. But what I will also say is that, you know, might want to look into your sleep and optimizing your sleep, sleeping more than seven hours a night and also getting and matching your circadian rhythm. So one of the things I don't do is, you know, or that I'm working on is getting, you know, uh, to stop eat, stop eating late at night. Yes, yeah, one of my big challenges in life. And also maybe like uh, get a loved one, you know, that that probably bring my health level and my microbiome up, you know, and my just generally overall happiness by having like a life partner I could hang out with. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm going to tell you guys, right? So even on a raw vegan diet, my diversity needs improvement. Now, hey, maybe your diversity is great. Maybe it isn't. But if you don't get a test, you'll never know. All right. So after your gut wellness score, there's all these different, you know, tests you could do. They have the summary here. Now we're going to go into the recommendations, which they say, you know, overall recommendations. They'll tell you what you need to do for foods. You need to eat these foods. They're rated. So, you know, if it's a green number one, that means eat more of. Dude, I've been eating lots of lettuce over all these years. It says eat more. Well, I don't, I'm not gonna necessarily going to eat more lettuce. I'm going to try to get some of these ones that I don't eat. So, like, I don't eat fennel too often. I'm going to start eating some guar beans or figure out how I can incorporate that into my life. I don't eat grape seeds. I may want to get a grape seed extract, eat more cloves. I was doing cloves you know, during the pandemic, and I was making like a clove, ginger, turmeric, you know, shots, eat some cinnamon, I'm adding cinnamon to all my desserts and all, all my oatmeal cereals I eat, add more radicchio, you know, maybe get some soy flour, I don't know if I'd eat soy flour, but I've incorporated eating more natto and tempeh, so I could get some of the soy uh, fibers in me, eat some white beans, hey, you know, as much as I love my black beans for their anthocyanin content, white beans have been shown to actually feed your microbiome better <laughs> than the black beans that I've been eating. You know, so this will give you some guidelines on what to eat. If it's a one, that's what you should really focus on. If it's a two, then maybe not focus on it as much. And if it's a three, you know, that's something that you don't need as much. Now, of course, they also have red ones. So if it's in red, that means you definitely should be avoiding it. You know, I need to eat, you know, less mushrooms. I do eat mushrooms. I eat seaweed. Of course, I don't eat butter. I don't eat fried foods and I don't eat red meat. And then uh, it, it'll go down to prebiotics and supplements. So if you guys want to supplement and take some prebiotics, these are the ones you should focus on. Um, you know, it, this is not red, but it's uh, yellow means cautionary. You shouldn't maybe include a lot of these. But if it's the number one, you should include it a lot. So turmeric, gum arabic, gar gum. GOS, which I've been taking in a supplement like almost every day these days. XOS is two. Um, EGCG, I have that in a supplement. I need to take a bit more. Quercetin, I've been taking that. Acacia fiber, niacin B3, curcumin, psyllium, you know. So, yeah, so you'll see what you need to, you know, in increase so that you can basically upgrade your microbiome test, create a better diversity, get more beneficials and less. Um, of the ones that aren't so good. And of course, on the lifestyle factors, they'll say, you know, hey, number one, I need number one thing I need to do, which is true, is intermittent fasting. I do intermittent fasting pretty good, but I need to dial that in even harder. I already eat a plant-based diet, so I can't really improve on that. But what I can improve on my plant-based diet is greater diversity. Eat the rainbow, which also is greater diversity as well. Uh, eat fermented foods, eat seasonally, I always already do these things, get a pet, I have a pet, spend time, spend more time in nature, because I spend time in nature in my garden almost every single day, and uh, high fiber foods, number two, and exercise is number three for me, so it says exercise is not important, as related to my microbiome, that being said, exercising is very important to your overall health, so you can see my overall recommendations, and I'm really doing a lot of these, I can maybe dial in a few more, and adjust some of these to make it even better. Next part that I want to go over is SCFAs, which are short chain fatty acids. Mine are satisfactory. In, my, in many people, I believe they may not be that good as mine, but mine also need some improvement. So, you know, this is why the, your microbiome is so important because they basically literally poop out short chain fatty acids 
that have anti-inflammatory effects and basically can strengthen your gut wells and do all kinds of other things, right? And important, this is not a measure of the metabolites found in my stool sample. This is, they take the bacteria that you have in you and they basically calculate because you have this many of this bacteria, this guy is making this much acetate, right? And so this normal people might have like 43.75 as a midpoint. I'm kicking their butt at 61.66 on the acetate. And that's important with weight management. So if you're overweight and you're not making enough acetate, that could be a challenge, right? Drop down to butyrate, right? Butyrate, right? The midpoint is 40.37. And I'm not quite there yet. I'm at 33.72 and mine needs improvement. So, you know, because of that, I may have gut barrier integrity problems, immune system support and protection against colorectal cancer. So, you know, although I'm pretty close to 40, I really want to get my butyrate levels up. And this directly relates to some of the probiotics that I showed you guys earlier that I'm deficient in. So that's why I'm working really hard to increase my bifido and acromantia and get some of the other bacteria that I have a little bit in too much quantity uh, lower. And then you can see my other propionate, propionate um, min point is normally 30.52, and I'm kicking butt once again at 52.59. So that helps to control blood pressure, weight management, and lowers cholesterol, and I'm satisfactory. So you can see acetate and propionate, I'm totally oversufficient, and, you know, butyrate, I'm a little bit low. So, yeah, this is very interesting. Short-chain fatty acids, you know, are, are the future of microbiome. They're so important. And I would encourage you guys to get it tested that you guys could see the bacteria in your gut and how much, you know, short-chain fatty acids you should be making based on your gut bacteria. Next, we're going to go into neurotransmitters. And this is, you know, there's a gut-brain connection. And luckily, mine's satisfactory. <laughs> Maybe if you were depressed all the time, you might not be in so good a shape. But basically, um, this shows that you could read it, the gut microbiome has been found to communicate with the brain through several different mechanisms, blah, blah, blah. So your, your bacteria in your gut can make neurotransmitters. So, you know, this neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, has to do with concentration, wakefulness, improved memory, learning. You know, the midpoint is 0 0.02 and I'm 0 0.01, which is in the satisfactory range. Um, the dopamine, I'm a good dopamine producer, man. I make about twice as much as the midpoint for motivation and motor function. The GABA. My sample was 1.71, a little bit lower than the midpoint there, but it still says I'm satisfactory. And uh, maybe it, that could improve my sleep if I increase the GABA and increase the bacteria that produce the GABA. My histamine, uh, midpoint is 0.13, and I make a bit more histamine than most at 0.58. Um, is it neoferrin? I have midpoint 0.03, I make 0.01, satisfactory once again. And serotonin. Right, everybody always wants the serotonin. Um, 0.26 is the midpoint. I'm kicking butt at 0 0.60, so that's satisfactory as well. And yes, I have good libido, digestion, mood regulation, appetite regulation, improved memory, and improved sleep. So yeah, short chain fatty acids. Very interesting data to look at. And of course, you, if you're low in one or the other, you could go ahead and click on it. Uh, maybe I was low. What was I low in? I'm low in the GABA. So let's go ahead and take a look at the GABA. GABA, blah, 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 is a neurotransmitter central nervous system. So it says list. So you can see these bacteria will actually, you know, make the GABA. And so my, I have, a, I, I have less uh, of this bacteria, so I make less GABA than maybe like the normal person. But I'm still in range. And the breakdown, so you can see the specific bacteria that make the GABA. All right, so uh, that's with the neurotransmitters. Now let's take a look at the toxins. Am I toxic? Is my colon toxic? Let's see what they say. And it says... So it says pathogenic gut bacteria have been found to produce small amounts of N or intermediate substances with various degree of toxicity to humans. So, all right, check it out. I'm satisfactory. I'm not toxic. <laughs> It'd be funny to see if uh, some raw vegans were toxic because they have pathogenic gut bacteria. Anyways, you could see, you know, my sample is zero. The average is, or the midpoint is 0 0.01. Once again, zero, zero. Hydrogen sulfide, 0 0.03, most people are 0 0.33. Um, methane, 0 0.4, most people, I'm 0, 0.00. So in terms of toxins, I'm satisfactory, right? 
So I'm aging less, I don't have the brain fog and fatigue, fatigue, inflammation, bloat, constipation, obesity, right? If you guys got the bad bacteria, mess you up. So you could click on it and then sulfate reducing bacteria, the main producers of hydrogen sulfide in the gut. And maybe that you'll have more like gas and stuff. And you could see like which bacteria you have. Like I don't have any of this bacteria that makes the hydrogen um, sulfide, you know, stuff right here but then i have a little bit of this guy much lower than the m m average and once again much lower than the average but yeah where are you guys at right so this is very interesting data that you can put to work to see you know if you have too much bacteria overgrowth then you could try to get those guys down and like until now you could never do this before so this is totally amazing so let's go ahead and look at detoxification another very important aspect to your health and of course detoxification i'm satisfactory and it says gut bacteria have been found to affect body's gut, body's detoxification pathway through the production of enzymes causing toxins bound in the liver to be freed up and reabsorbed in the colon. So, you know, like, yeah, ask a raw vegan guy that tells you to go on a 100-day or one-year juice fast, you know, if your gut bacteria has to do with, you know, breaking down toxins. And say, no, you just got to drink more juice, right? Hey, I sell juices, but I don't like to tell you to go on an extra long juice fast because i'm aware that gut bacteria has been found to affect the body's detoxification pathways and if you're restricting the your gut bacteria's food by water fasting or juice fasting that will definitely kill some bacteria increase some others and change what your microbiome looks at so you know hey if you're gonna go on a long juice fast best thing you guys can do is buy a microbiome test now and then do a juice fast for 100 days and do your microbiome test later and i'd love to see your data <laughs> Because I'll tell you guys, I, I would think that in my head that, you know, things are not going to be as good as before you started because you're restricting the food they're, you're eating. I mean, you saw in my recommendations, they see eat seasonally, eat a plant-based diet, eat a wide variety of foods as well. So anyways, let's take a look at I'm satisfactory. Uh, so they're mainly they're looking at a beta gluconoridase and the midpoint is 0.3 and I'm 0.35. So definitely satisfactory i'm a little bit better in detoxification than the average person <laughs> so that's good to know let's move on to the nutrients so the nutrients right your gut bacteria can make nutrients our gut bacteria produces many nutrients right that being said the nutrients our gut bacteria makes may not be as absorbed as nutrients from food so you should not you know rely on your gut bacteria for these nutrients although the nutrients that they produce can play a role in your overall health so you can see some of the nutrients Equinol, uh, you know, midpoint is 1.3, and I'm at 1.53. Vitamin K2, right? Check this out. Normal people, average midpoint, 3.98. I'm making 0.34 based on the bacteria in my gut. They say it's satisfactory. You know, I'd like to have it a little bit higher. Of course, that's probably because I'm vegan. Um, but that's why I also have encouraged for a long time to eat vitamin K2 rich food including natto, which I have a video on this channel about, because I don't want to depend on my gut bacteria to make my vitamin K2, because your gut bacteria may not be making it, as in my case. So that's why I eat my vitamin K2, which, in my opinion, is a better source than relying on your gut bacteria. So yeah, nutrients. And th this is all beta, because I mean, a lot of this stuff is not really known yet. Let's go into permeability. This is critical if you have, you know, skin conditions, autoimmune challenges um, and your uh, permeability. And this is the LPS. These are bad things. These are not good to have. So you want to have the lowest amount of LPS. So let's see what it says. So uh, my sample is a little bit higher actually than the midpoint, but it still says I'm satisfactory. I do know that this is a challenge for me because my acromancia is low, my bifido is low. Once I get those in a range, I believe this will come down. And if we kind of look at that, you know, you can see the breakdown. And I have too much of the Provitella. So I really got to get this Provitella down, the Provitella coppery. And once I do that, I think if I basically build up the Acromantia and uh, Bifido, the Provitella will go down as, as, as long as I also, you know, eat the foods that, that'll make that go down as well. And then I could be in better shape. But I'm pretty close, you know, but I'm still satisfactory according to this test and the gram positive. You know, 
I'm at 38.01 and the midpoint is 50.14, so I'm satisfactory as well. So that permeability intolerance, so if I have like food intolerances, let's take a look. This is food. While many intolerances are predetermined genetically through lack of enzyme production, some are also impacted by your gut microbiota. Many gut bacteria produce enzymes relative to degrading substances ingested both through diet as well as through uh, produce as byproducts metabolizing other substrates. Intolerance should not be confused with allergies. Intolerances are mild reactions based on lack of enzymes, not an immune reaction. And this is interesting. For both lactose and oxalate degraders, close or to or highly higher than median is desired. So you want to have higher than median on lactose and oxalate. So this is the cool thing. Lactose, am I lactose intolerant, right? Based on my bacteria, no. I could digest lactose despite not eating lactose, you know. Um, then most people at 0.41, I'm at 1.12. Now, oxalates, this is the part that gets very interesting, guys. I've been telling and teaching about oxalate degrading bacteria in your gut that helps you digest oxalates. If you go to Sub-Saharan Africa, right, a lot of the people over there, if you tested them, they'll have a high number, maybe even higher than I do, because they eat oxalates on a regular and daily basis. A lot of the greens they eat over in Sub-Saharan Africa are oxalate-rich foods, so they're going to have the bacteria. Do I have the bacteria to digest oxalates? Well, let's take a look. Midpoint, 0.33. What do I do? I'm 0.82. So if you did a microbiome test and you were down at like 0.11, which I'm not, right, then you might be concerned and you might, might want to relax and not eat that many oxalates or you know, boil them and, and throw away the boil water to get them out of the food you're eating because, you don't, you know, you can't deal with them as well. And so I'm satisfactory. But, you know, hey, if you don't have enough oxalate degraders, you could have kidney stones, reduce mineral absorption, inflammation and autoimmune challenges. And then it kind of talks about humans lack the di enzymes that just, you know, to metabolize dietary oxalate and gut bacteria, therefore, affect the ability to degrade oxalates. All right, so let's go on to, let's see, we're in uh, food intolerances. Let's go to longevity. This this is an area that also is very important, and I think this is the last section we'll be going over today. So my longevity needs improvement, and it says our gut microbiota are capable of producing enzymes implicated in longevity, which we cannot produce ourselves. So if longevity is important, you guys, you should be paying attention to your gut microbiome. Don't just think, oh, I mean, a fruit-based diet, it's the best diet. I'm going to live a long time. Man, I haven't seen a lot of fruitarians that live over 100 years. I mean, there's a few, but, you know, uh, like I'd rather be an Okinawan, you know, that's been shown to feed your gut microbiome more with all their resistant starch they eat, right? So anyways, let's take a look at what mine is. So my rosinase, that actually breaks down like the um, cruciferous vegetables. And the midpoint's 4.87 and mine's only at 0.6. Right now, there is some myrosinase in the food as you eat it, um, but it's anti-carcinogenic and anti-aging. So mine needs improvement. So yeah, there's a, you know, I need to work on, you know, eating the myrosinase enzyme and cruciferous vegetables in their raw state more so that I can actually get the benefits from this, even though I'm not making it myself. That being said, my goal is to, increase my myrosinase enzymes, um, you know, through modulating my gut bacteria better. So I wish they had like, you know, like, uh, you know, how to, you know, increase the myrosinase. But I think if I just get my gut microbiome with the greater diversity and more in line, then I will be, you know, in better shape in terms of this. Now, in the future, because this is a beta, they may be, may be adding more criteria in here, more enzymes that can confer, you know, longer life because there's a lot more data than what they are revealing right now based on what I've read. Uh, that being said, they're probably just going over some of the more, you know, solid data and the data that they've been able to add to their system here. So then that's the longevity. And then when we get back down to basically the samples, which is what you guys saw a little bit earlier. Oh, and then they have advanced results. And I'm not really going to get into that too much. That's beyond the scope of this video. But then you, it basically goes into the full taxonomy and all the different bacteria you have. All right, so there you guys have it. I've shared my full microbiome data with you guys that I did tested on November 11, 2022. I'm currently modifying my diet and approach 
to balance out my diet. Once again, you know, the goal of this video is to get you guys to do a microbiome test so that you guys can see the kind of data that you can get if you did download your ombre data and then upload it to biome site, which goes a little bit deeper and is a little bit easier to understand for the common lay person. So you guys see where I'm at. Hey, maybe if you guys get a test and upload your results, I'll take a look at your results. Maybe you're better than me. Maybe you're worse off than me. I don't really know. And you know what? I don't really care because you should only compare your microbiome data against yourself because that's the one you need to improve. It's great that, you know, the raw food diet might've worked for some people and their microbiome might be great. But keep in mind that besides just the diet that they're specifically eating, there's many other factors to your microbiome, such as sleep, you know, overall stress levels in your life, exercise, pets, all these different things. And this is still a relatively new area of science and it's not really well understood, although they have some of the basics down, you know. And so I'm just glad I did the test so I could have a baseline and I encourage you guys to get a baseline done for you and all your family members at this time. I'm currently working on getting my parents' uh, microbiome test done. My dad does have Alzheimer's, so it'll be interesting to see how his microbiome looks and I'm definitely gonna work to you know, maybe not have a microbiome like his. And my mom currently has some you know, potential IBS things that could be resolved with some of the prebiotic fibers that I've actually been taking that I may have a video on in the future. If you guys enjoyed my microbiome data testing, going in deep, deeper than anybody else does because they just go over their ombre score, hey, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. That'll encourage me to do my, more microbiome stuff on my channel because, you know, I think I'm the only raw food channel that gets into microbiome. Maybe there's one other channel, Lissa. Lissa's at Raw Food Romance. She's gone over her uh, ombre test, but didn't go deep as this. And she actually had a, uh, you know, microbiome researcher on her show with her. So I commend Lissa out at Raw Food Romance for you know, probably being one of the only other raw vegans that I know that have done a microbiome test. So I encourage you guys, no matter what diet you're on, a fruitarian, raw diet, you know, carnivore diet, get a microbiome test to see where you guys are at so you guys can eat for your microbes, not just how you think you want to eat, how you want to eat based on how the food tastes, but for your gut buddies, which are so important to your health. If your health is truly important enough, if your health is important to you and you just want to party and eat, you know, mango mono meals for the rest of your life, Go for it, man. Do whatever, guy, what makes you happy. Once again, I almost lost my life when I was younger. And I'm into this not to claim to be a raw foodist, but I'm into this for 100% health. And I strive to do the best I can. And I am not perfect, you know, to always increase my health and look at some of these new emerging technologies that have been proven in science, you know, that, that may be able to help me. And hopefully this video will help you guys too. And that's why I make these videos for you guys. So if it, this video has helped you out and open your eyes to, wow, man, John, I'm going to get that microbiome test because I think it could be important. Give this video a big thumbs up. Also, more importantly, please be sure to share this with other people that are eating a raw vegan diet, a vegan diet, a carnivore diet, I don't care, whatever diet, so that they could see some of the data that they can get from a microbiome test that can positively impact your life, in my personal opinion, so you guys could change for the better have a healthier life and a longer life at that as well. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes. I'll be coming out every five to seven days. You know, I know I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you get invited as my new videos come out. I'll likely have a video on the prebiotic fibers that I'll be eating in the future. And more importantly, be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below uh, to my video I did on resistant starch and a raw vegan diet and how I'm increasing the resistant starch in my raw vegan diet, as well as my video on why I start to eat some heat processed foods, which one of the reasons is to expand the diversity of foods that I am eating so I could have a more robust and resilient microbiome. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, other beans, grains, and seeds, and plant-based foods. They're the best.